Carta. Carta. Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Dayakara Mohore Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Daya kara mahare Toma bina Jagata samsahare Toma bina ke dayalu Jagata samsahare Patita pavana hetu Tava Batahara Patita Pavana Hitu Tava Batahara Mosa mo patita prabhu na pae be Mosa mo patita prabhu na pae be Ha ha Prabhu Nityananda Premananda Suhuki Ha ha Prabhu Nityananda Premananda Suhuki Kripa bhalo khanna koro Ami bhara dukhi Kripa bhalo khanna koro Ami bhara dukhi Dhaya koro sita pati Adwaita gosai Dhaya koro sita pati Adwaita gosai
Tava Kripa Bole Pai Chaitanya Nita Tava Kripa Bole Pai Chaitanya Nita Ha ha Swarup Sanatan Rupa Raguna Ha ha Swarup Sanatan Rupa Raguna Bhata Yoga Shri Jiva Prabhu Lokana Bhata Yoga Shri Jiva Prabhu Lokana Daya Koro Shri Acharya Prabhu Shri Nivas Daya Koro Shri Acharya Prabhu Shri Nivas Ramachandra Sangamagi Naratamadas Ramachandra Sangamagi Naratamadas Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Daya Karamore Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Daya Karamore Toma Bina Ketayalu Jagata Samsahari Toma Bina Ketayalu Jagata Samsahari Nitai Gor Hari Bo Hari Bo Hari Bo Hari Bo Nitai Gor Premanande Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya
Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya All right, so yesterday we covered this verse. We will chant this verse first. Vipada Shantata Shasvat Tatra Tatra Jagat Garo Babato Darshanam Yachat Apunar Baba Darshanam I wish that all those calamities would happen again and again so that we could see you again and again. For, For seeing, seeing you, you means we will, we will no, no longer, longer see repeated, repeated birth, birth and, and deaths. Death. So, that so that was, was text, text number, number 25. 25. And, and then, then we, went we went on, on to this, this one. one. Janma Aishwarya Shruta Edamana Madapuman Naivarhatiya Pidatum Vai Tuamakin Chanakocharam My Lord, your, your Lordship, Lordship can, can easily be approached, be approached by, by, but, but only by, by those who are, who are materially, materially exhausted. exhausted. One, One who is on, on the path, path of material, material progress, progress trying, trying to, to improve himself with, with respectable parentage, great, great opulence, opulence, high, high education, education, and bodily and beauty, cannot, cannot approach, approach you with, with sincere feelings. So, so we, should we should understand, understand Queen, Queen Kunti, Kunti is, is not saying that we should not have education and we should not try to look nice and we should not worry about wealth but she's saying that we should not be endeavoring excessively to get these things it's important that we don't just simply think only about these things and make great endeavors to get these things but if they come by honest endeavor and in the course of time, then it's all right. Yes, we can use these things. It's a blessing from the Lord. If you're good looking, if you're, ha if you're born in a good family, if you're wealthy, these things are the grace of God and from your past life. But we shouldn't worry about it if we don't have these things. And just because we have these things, we should not become proud of having these things. We shouldn't be intoxicated, right? We spoke about that yesterday. Because that attachment to the material assets of life, it's like a, a, like a fever. And just like when you have a fever, you don't want to increase the fever. You want, to you want the fever to go down and to come to a healthy condition. Uh, the, the, there's, there's an example. Somebody has a fever, so they brought the doctor. And the doctor, if he gives some drug which increases the fever, then you know, well, this is not working. This is not the right treatment. But if another doctor comes and he gives an injection and the patient dies, then that's also not good. You, just like materialistic people, they will increase the fever. They want to get more wealth and more power and more success in the material world. They're trying to increase the temperature. And the Mayavadis, they're trying to make everything zero. Just like if the doctor gives some injection and the patient dies. You know, you say, oh my goodness, he's dead. The doctor will say, oh, fever is gone. Why are you worried? Fever is gone. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> 
The patient is dead. So Mayavadi, the impersonal philosophy is like that. They want to make everything zero. Huh? Make everything zero. Go away from the world. Give up everything. That is not our Krishna conscious philosophy. But rather, whatever we have, whatever assets we have, somebody has some wealth, somebody has some good education, good looks, whatever, you can use these things in the service of Lord Krishna. Use everything in the service of Krishna. Not that we have to give up or go away from these things, but the idea is to dovetail everything in the service of Lord Krishna. Just like you have some wealth, you can use it for the service of Krishna, to help the temples, to build temples, or to distribute books. You can do Shastra Dan, or you can sponsor the prasadam distribution. So we can use wealth in that way. And some people are very good looking. They're very charming. They can use their beauty, their good looks, to go and bring people to Krishna consciousness. You go out and meet people and introduce them and bring them to Krishna consciousness. And sometimes we would see some of the ladies who would go out to preach Krishna consciousness. They'll bring back many people <laughs> because they, they look very nice and the men are attracted by the charming woman. They come back to the temple. They want to see what's going on. And people are educated, they have a good education. Okay, so use your knowledge for the service of Krishna to help organize our temples, just like here. There's many devotees, many intelligent devotees are combining their intelligence, how to organize the programs here at the center so that everyone can get an opportunity to do service for the lordships. Very nice. It's very impressive to know how th they change the management every few years and everybody's arranged, uh, it's all arranged, different people, they get an opportunity to come and lead the kirtan or to offer the RT or to help in the cooking. And some people help with the accounting. So all of this takes a lot of organization. So people use their intelligence how to do all of these things. So there's, n there's nothing wrong in that. And Prabhupada was not against us using technology. He, he, he expected that we would use technology in the service of Krishna. And you can see how the devotees are using technology. We have so many websites. We have so much on the mobile networks which we're doing for the propagation of Krishna consciousness. And so this is, this is proper use of good education, using it for the service of Krishna. Everything belongs to Krishna. We just have to know how to use it properly. Srila Prabhupada would sometimes talk about how uh, communist countries like uh, China and in the past Rus Russia was also socialist, how they had the communist philosophy that everything belongs to the state. So we don't say everything belongs to the state, but we have our own communist philosophy. We have our Krishna consciousness communism, that everything belongs to Krishna. Everything belongs to God not just simply some temporary, temporary state. You know, in the past there was no China, there was no Russia, there was no Cuba, these things. But th these are temporary cre creations. But God, the Supreme Lord, He is always there and everything belongs to Him. So we recognize everything is His. It's meant for His service. Uh, Prabhupada gave the example, he said the common people are easily tricked. The, the communists would come to the people and they'd say, oh, 
Go and pray. Go to your temple. Go to your church and pray to God. Ask him to give you bread. And they would say like that to the people. And the people would go to church and they'd pray, Oh, God, give us our daily bread. Please give us some bread. And then they would come out from the church and the communist people would say, Well, did God give you any bread? And they would say, No. And they said, now ask us. And they would say, oh, my dear communists, can you give us bread? And the communists would say, yes, just wait. We'll call, bring the vans, send the vans. And they brought the vans, and they gave everybody bread. And they said, you see, our, we communists, we are greater than your God. You see, So in this way, the people gave up their faith in God, and they became followers of communism. But those people who were a little more intelligent, they would say to the communists, who gave you the bread? Where did you get the bread from? Who gave you the wheat? Who gave you the rain to grow the grain? Who gave you the, the, the fire to make the bread? Like that, we would, you could question them. Where you got everything from? You have simply stolen what was the property of God, and you're claiming it as your own. Just like last night, I was t trying to tell the story about the one man who came to Mayapur, and he was making glass, right? And, and Prabhupada was asking him about making the glass and where you got the sand from. And so then the man was saying, well, it's my sand, I have l land and everything. And Prabhupada was insisting, yeah, but whose sand is it? And then finally the man understood Srila Prabhupada's point, that Srila Prabhupada was making the point that everything belongs to God. And so then Prabhupada said, yes, everything belongs to God, but you're taking the sand. And so then a devotee said, He's a thief, Prabhupada. And, but then the man said, well, I'm also a life member. <laughs> <laughs> so Prabhupada said, then you're only a little thief. <laughs> because you're giving some donation. So you're only a little thief. And there was another time the devotees were walking in the park in, in the USA, in one city in USA, and they walked past a, a big mansion, there was this big mansion with the big grounds, beautiful big house. And the devotee said to Prabhupada, said, Srila Prabhupada, this house is owned by one of the richest men in the USA. He has oil fields, he's mining oil, and he's selling it, he's, m he's making millions of dollars. And they said, Prabhupada, we want to preach to him. We were going to preach to him. So Prabhupada said, oh, really? What are you going to preach to him? How are you going to preach to him? And one devotee said, oh, we will tell him he's not the body. And Prabhupada said, do you think he will believe you? And another devotee said, we will tell him to surrender to Krishna. And Prabhupada said, oh, do you, you think he's going to surrender to Krishna? He said, no. He said, you should tell him, he is a thief. He has stolen the property of God. That oil he is taking from the earth is actually the property of the Supreme Lord. He is taking someone's, someone else's property and he will be punished for stealing all that property. At the time of leaving the body and maybe even before, he will suffer because he is taking another's property. We have to understand everything is the property of the Lord. We should use everything carefully in his service. And so one who is not intoxicated, then they will use their wealth, their education, and whatever qualifications they may have, they will use them all in the service of the Supreme Lord. So this is, this is the proper point to understand. Oh wait, let me just find this next verse. 
Mm. Okay, we're going to go on text number 10, the property, property of the impoverished, because Lord Krishna was talking about how he can be easily approached, but only by those who are materially exhausted. So now Queen Kunti is continuing in this theme. She's explaining about how Lord Krishna is actually the property of the impoverished. That <laughs> those who've given up everything, who are not attached to anything, that Krishna becomes their property. Let's chant the verse first. Namo kanchana vitaya Nivrita guna vritaye Atma ramaya santaya Kaivoya pataye nama Queen Kunti, Queen Kunti says, says, my obeisances are unto, unto you, you, meaning Lord, Lord Sri Krishna, Krishna, who, who are, are the, the property of the materially impoverished. You have, you have nothing, nothing to do with the actions and reactions of the material modes of nature. You, you are self-satisfied, self and therefore you are, you are the, the most gentle, gentle and are master of the, the monists. So, so Queen, Queen Kunti, Kunti is, is continuing on this theme, how Lord Krishna appreciates those who are detached from the material assets of this world. They're not claiming anything is belonging to them. You know, in the material world, everyone has something. This is my home. This is my house, this is my family, this is my ca car, or this is my bicycle. Everyone has some kind of assets here in this world. But from time to time, people will give up something. Just like you may have a job, and you may give up one job to take a better job. Right? If you get another offer, or if you know you can get in another company, with better salary or with better conditions, more suitable to your present job, you give up one job to take another job. In the same way, one may be working for some man, you prefer to work for another man, you give up the one job to go and work for someone else. We, we want to improve our situation in, in the material world. We're trying to improve it. And to think that we have nothing, that is not possible. Yeah, yeah, everyone has to have something. You have to possess something. So in the same way, try to understand that those who are devotees of the Lord, they can give up the material assets to take up spiritual assets. And we have examples, of course, great devotees, like the followers of Lord Chaitanya, Goswamis, Rupa and Sanatana Goswami, and Raghunath Das Goswami. They were very special personalities. Rupa and Sanatan were two brothers, and they were serving the Nawab Hussein Shah. Now, if you, if you, of course, most of you have not been to Bengal, but if you go to, if you go to Bengal, there's a place in Bengal called Ramakeli. And Ramakeli is a place where the Nawab had his headquarters 500 years ago. In the time of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Bengal was ruled by the Nawab Hussein Shah. He was a very powerful man in history. Even today, many historians will come from the West, from America and from Europe. They will come there to Ramakeli just to see the ruins 
because the ruins of the buildings which he had constructed are still there. And you can see even, it, it said one of the buildings, they said it was the jail where Sanatan was held a prisoner. Actually, tomorrow is the disappearance of Sanatan Goswami. But anyway, uh, Sanatana Goswami and Rupa Goswami were both highly educated brahmanas. But they had to take up service under the Nawab Hussein Shah. And they had become Mohammedans. And they'd taken them, one was Dabir Kas and the other was Sakara Malik. In other words, they'd taken Mohammedan names because they were working in the service of the Nawab, who was a cow killer, who was a big meat eater. He was, and he was always trying to expand his empire. He was going to fight, trying to take over Arisa, going into Utkal and fighting people like Maharaj Prataparudra and so on. Anyway, Rupa and Sanatan, one was the Chancellor of the Exchequer and the other was the Prime Minister in the government of the Nawab Hussein Shah. They had very big positions, but they did not like it. If you go to Ramakali, it's a very wonderful place, very beautiful. You know, Vrindavan has become so congested and so crowded and Everything. It's not the way it used to be, you know. If you'd gone to Vrindavan 50 years ago, it was so beautiful, it was so peaceful. You go now everywhere, there's cars and it's congested everywhere and buildings everywhere, the apartments everywhere. But Ramakali is very special. This place where Rupa and, and Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went there and he met Rupa and Sanatana. Because the two of them had written to Lord Chaitanya. They'd heard about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Lord Chaitanya had defeated, well, he defeated uh, uh, Keshava Kashmiri in debate. And then he had uh, defeated the Chankazi and he got permission for the Sankirtan to go on in Mayapur. And then he'd taken sannyas and he'd gone to Puri, and he converted Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya into a Vaishnava. Previously, he was a, a Mayavad, he was a logician, and he was, the, he was the pundit in the Puri temple, and he was the one teaching all the sannyasis who were there in the Shankaracharya Mat in Puri. He would teach them Vedanta philosophy, and Mahaprabhu, comes along and he's only 24 years of age and he comes along and he meets with Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya and he converts him into a Vaishnava. So Rupa and Sanatan, this Dabir Kas and Sakara Malik, they heard about Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. They were attracted and they wanted to join with him and to work for him rather than to work for the Nawab Hussein Shah. They thought, why should we work for the Nawab Hussein Shah? If Krishna himself has come in the form of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we should work for him. Why should we just work for some worldly king, some worldly emperor? Let us work for the Supreme Lord. So r they wrote to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and they told them how they were very eager, very desirous to j serve and to work with him, to spread Krishna consciousness everywhere. They understood Mahaprabhu was Krishna himself and that he was delivering the world. He was Patit Pavan. He'd come to save the fallen souls. And they knew they were very fallen. They were in a fallen condition. They were eager to save themselves. So Mahaprabhu went there to Ramakali. He met with Rupa and Sanat, and he convinced them, give up everything and come. And they went. First of all, Rupa Goswami left, 
It said when Rupa Goswami retired, he had so much wealth it could fill a boat. And he divided it in a very exemplary manner. Any of you who have a lot of wealth, you should divide it in this way, right? Half he gave for the service of the devotees, the brahmanas and the Vaishnavas. 25% went for the family and relatives and 25% he kept for emergency purposes. Sanatana Goswami, he was a little later in coming and he got arrested by the Nawab Hussein Shah. The Nawab put him in prison because the Nawab didn't want him to resign. Na the Nawab wanted to keep him to, rule the, to, to run the government because the Nawab was always going fighting wars. He wanted Sanatana Goswami to stay there and take care of the, you know, the kingdom and all the exchange, <laughs> all the money. Like, so anyways, he got put in prison, but Sanatan escaped. He told the jailer, he said, if, he said, I want to go to Mecca. If you let me go, let me go, I will go to Mecca. It will be good for you. you will all and then he also, th he, he knew that Rupa Goswami had taken 20, kept 25% for emergencies. So he told the jailer, you can get that 25%. We'll give it to you. So the jailer agreed to let Sanatan go. So Rupa Goswami left and he met Lord Chaitanya at Prayag and Lord Chaitanya instructed him for 10 days at Prayag at Dashashwamedha Ghat and Sanatana Goswami he met Lord Chaitanya at Banaras, Varanasi and Lord Chaitanya instructed Sanatan for two months on the science of Krishna consciousness and then he sent both of them to Vrindavan. He told them, Vrindavan is your Prabhu Datta Desh. Prabhu Datta Desh, the place given by your master. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu sent them both. And he got, he had to shave them up because they, you know, they were Mohammedans. They had beards and everything and changed their dress and put on Babaji clothes and sent them off to Vrindavan. They gave up everything, but they got much more. They gave up material thing to get spiritual, to get the real treasure, which is there at the lotus feet of Lord Sri Krishna. They went to Vrindavan. They stayed in Vrindavan. They discovered the different places of Krishna's pastimes. They built temples. Rupa Goswami built Radha Govinda temple. Sanatana Goswami built Madan Mohan temple. Wonder, and they wrote wonderful books, books which we are relishing today. And so they did so much more than they could ever do working for the Nawab. They were just working for the Nawab. It was just a mundane job. They were just earning some salary but they gave it up to take up devotional service, to dedicate their life in the service of the Supreme Lord. And because they gave up everything, Krishna rewarded them. Krishna took care of them and provided everything they needed. Please take care of these small children. So, the R Raghunath Goswami was another one. Raghunath Goswami was born in a very wealthy family. His father and uncle were the wealthiest men. They were maintaining all of the brahmanas in Bengal. They were so wealthy. And Raghunath Das, he was not happy to be in that situation. He had heard also about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and he wanted to go and join Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But his family would not let him. The family, when he would run away, they'd send men to capture him and bring him back. And they got him married to a beautiful young girl who was so nice, who spoke so beautiful. She was like the goddess of fortune. But still, 
He did not want to enjoy material life. He had so much wealth. He had so much opportunity for material enjoyment. He did not want it. He wanted to take up the higher service, service for the Supreme Lord. So it's famous how Raghunath, finally he met Lord Nityananda at Panihati. If you go to Panihati, very nice, there's a temple there. By the grace of His Holiness Bhakti Charu Swami Maharaj, he purchased one, prop, one temple there. We have a nice Iskon temple at the Panihati. It's right on the bank of the Ganga, not very far away from Calcutta, not very far away even from the airport, Calcutta airport, and very holy place. Raghunath came there and he put on the Shiradahi festival. Do you, sh do you celebrate Shiradahi festival here? Good, yes, we have it. M many places we will put on the Shiradahi festival, remembering Lord Nityananda giving mercy to Raghunath Das. Previously, Raghunath Das had come to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and he told Lord Chaitanya, I want to go with you, I want to be with you. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told him, oh, just go home, don't be a madman, just go home and behave normally, keep Krishna in your heart. But later on, when he met Lord Nijananda, again he asked that, I want to get free from this materialistic life. And Lord Nityananda told him, you put on this festival, distribute shira, dahi, for all the devotees. They had a big festival. Everyone was fed. Even the dogs were fed. Everyone was happy. And R Lord Nityananda blessed Raghunath that very soon you will be freed from your materialistic life. And so it happened, a short time later, Raghunath escaped and the family could not catch him to bring him back. He was very careful. And he got to Jagannath Puri and he came to Jagannath Puri, met with Lord Chaitanya and Lord Chaitanya told him, you're very lucky. He said, you were like an animal who'd fallen in a hole where people passed stool. And you were in that hole. Usually people fall into that hole, they never get out. You're very lucky. You've been freed from that situation. So Raghunath stayed in Jagannath Puri with Lord Chaitanya, so long as Lord Chaitanya was manifest. And after Lord Chaitanya finished his pastimes and left this world, then Raghunath went to Vrindavan. And he stayed with Rupa and Sanatan. And then Raghunath went to Radhakund. And he stayed at Radhakund and he developed the kunds there. By the grace of Lord Krishna. Raghunath had left all the money. He did not bring any of his money with him. But Krishna provided. What happened? One man was going up to Badrinath with a lot of gold. He wanted to take it up to Badrinath to for the people who are doing the puja and the seva there. But when he was going to Badrinath, he got a dream. And Lord Krishna came in his dream and told him, don't take the money to Badrinath. I want you to go to Radhakund and give the money to Raghunath. Raghunath needs the money. And so he went there and he, he didn't know who was Raghunath. He had to ask people. They told him, Raghunath is there at Radhakund. He brought the money, Raghunath used it, and he developed those nice kunds which we know today, Radha kund and Shama kund. So Krishna provides, you don't need anything. Prabhupada went to America, how much money did he take? Forty rupees, right. He sold a set of Bhagavatams on the boat. So Captain Pandya gave him how many dollars? Twenty dollars or something. He gave him, you know, he, Prabhupada had brought books with him. Bhagavatam, because he'd printed the first canto, 
The first canto was printed in India initially. And he, he had book, books on the boat. So he sold a set to the captain of the ship. That was the only money he had in America. Krishna took care of him. When we take risks on behalf of Krishna, then Krishna helps. Krishna reciprocates. If we're willing to try on behalf of Lord Krishna to do something for the service of Krishna, then Krishna will help. Krishna will provide for the devotees. And we see this Krishna consciousness movement was begun with no money. There was no money in the beginning. But Krishna provides. Just like in London, he sent that um, English as musician, uh, George Harrison, he, he purchased Bhaktivedanta Manor. And different things happened, like in Vrindavan, the one lady donated the land for the temple. And so many different things happened. We had no money. There was no money. But somehow Krishna would provide because the devotees were surrendering to Krishna. They were risking everything for the service of Krishna. So Lord Krishna is saying here, that, uh, Queen Kunti rather, Queen Kunti is saying that she offers her obeisances to Lord Krishna because Lord Krishna becomes the property of the material impoverished. Those who give up their attachment to the, ma the wealth of the material world and surrender fully to Krishna, Krishna becomes their property. Krishna becomes controlled by them. Just the other day we were hearing the young, the young lady was telling the pastime of Lord Jagannath. Right? Did you hear that? Do you remember that? She was telling about the Brahmana who thought, Krishna said, I carry what you lack, I preserve what you have. And the Brahmana thought, oh, Krishna couldn't do it. And he crossed out Krishna. And then the Brahmana went out for begging. And when he was out for begging, two boys came. And they brought big baskets of food. And they said, here, take it. This is for you. And, you know, the, they had nothing at home. The Brahmana and his wife, they were very poor. They just lived by begging whatever he could beg every day. That was all they had. And so these two boys came. And one was very dark and one was white. And the, the dark boy had three big scratches on him. On his, his tongue was scratched, the girl was saying. I'd never heard that before. Anyway, she said like that, the tongue was scratched. And she th he said, we want to go quick before your husband comes because he may beat us again. And so they left everything. And when the husband came back, he was telling his wife, I could not get anything. I was not able to get anything. Nobody gave me any donations. And the wife said, what do you mean? Come on, there's so much here. And the husband was surprised. Where did it all come from? He said, oh, these two boys brought everything. And the husband was surprised. And then they understood. Krishna himself had come. And the tongue was scratched because the husband had crossed out. He thought Krishna wouldn't do it. But Krishna personally came to show that he will maintain the devotees. He will take care. For those who meditate on my transcendental form and worship me with love, for them I carry what you lack and preserve what you have. And so this is Lord Krishna's relationship with his devotees who give up everything for his service. So Queen Kunti is appreciating this wonderful mood of Lord Krishna. And then she also said, you have nothing to do with the actions and reactions of the material modes of nature. Lord Krishna is the controller of the material nature. It's, he, he's transcendental to it. So when things happen in the material world, it's not just simply Krishna doing it, but it's done 
through Krishna's arrangement, the reactions of the modes of nature. Lord Krishna is always transcendental. He is not under the modes of nature. So when Lord Krishna performs some activities like dancing with the gopis or stealing butter, it's not of the material world. It's a transcendental activity. Ordinary people, common people, they do not understand the transcendental nature of the Lord. But Queen Kunti understands. And then she describes how Lord Krishna is self-satisfied. He says, Atma Ramaya, Atma Rama, just like in Srimad Bhagavatam, there is the Atma Rama Sloka, right? You know that verse? Atma Rama Shamanayo Nirgranta Apirukrame Kurvanti Ahaitakim Bhaktim Itam Bhutta Gono Hare Atmaramas, those who are Atmaramas. Of course, Lord Krishna, he is Atmarama. He is self-satisfied. And those great souls like Sukadeva Goswami, he is also self-satisfied. They're liberated from the material world. They have no, nothing they want from the material world. But, when they hear the topics of Lord Krishna, they're attracted. This uh, Atmarama verse was discussed because often the impersonalists, they cannot understand how somebody who is Atmarama can be attracted to anything. They think the topics of Lord Krishna to be something material. But the, those who are Atmarama they are satisfied in the self. They have no material desire. But the topics of Lord Krishna are never material. And those who are liberated souls, they will be attracted to hear the pastimes of Krishna. And that is why Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya, he asked Lord Chaitanya to explain that verse to him. And the Bhattacharya was a, a a great scholar, and but he asked Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, please explain this sloka to me. He couldn't understand. He tried to explain it, and he explained each word. Actually, it says Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya, he is Brihaspati. He is the, the guru of the demigods. And he came in Chaitanya Lila as Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya. But as Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya, he is asking Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, please tell me the meaning of this Atmarama sloka. And Lord Chaitanya said, you explain it first. So the Bhattacharya explained each and every word in the verse. And Lord Chaitanya said, very nice. And then Lord Chaitanya explained the verse in more than 60 different ways without touching on any of the ways in which Bhattacharya had explained the verse. So the Bhattacharya was completely astounded. He understood that this Chaitanya Mahaprabhu must, he is no ordinary person, but he is the Supreme Lord himself. And again, Lord Chaitanya also explained this Atmarama Sloka to Sanatan Goswami also. So the, here, Lord Krishna is being described by Queen Kunti that you are Atmarama. You are satisfied in yourself. You have nothing you want. You're fully satisfied. That is the nature of Lord Krishna. He is the super, he, everything is his. So, you know, in the material world, we are all trying to increase, try to get more because we have so little. But Lord Krishna, everything is His. He doesn't have to get anything. It's already His. And so He is completely self-satisfied. At the same time, 
he takes pleasure in his devotees. So it, it said also, Kaivalya Patayenama, you are most gentle and are master of the monis. The monis are interested in becoming one. They want to merge, to enter into the oneness, to give up their identity. That is what is called Sayuja Mukti. But that Sayuja Mukti is like spiritual suicide to enter into the oneness of Brahman. There is no variety, there are no activities, there are no relationships, there's only the oneness. And so there's no suffering, but there's no real enjoyment. There's no pleasure really there. The monists do not know what is real pleasure. They may be free of the suffering of the material world, but they, are, they can never experience the bliss of transcendental life. That is only possible for those who are engaged in devotional service. So here Queen Kunti is des describing to Lord Krishna that you are the, mas the master of the monas because you show the monas the real goal is not to become one and merge into the oneness but the real goal is to become one in interest with the Supreme Lord. Oneness in interest, that our desire is simply for the pleasure of the Supreme Lord, not for our own pleasure. So that is real oneness, to satisfy the, the senses, the desire of the Lord. The, the devotees, they have that desire. The monas, they're simply thinking, I will become one, and I, I will become the supreme myself. We're think they're thinking like that. But this is not the mood, and this is not what Lord Krishna wants. In, in the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna has also described this mentality. He said, Klesho dikatarastesham avyakta sakta chetasam that for those who are attached to this unmanifested, impersonal feature, then it is very troublesome and very difficult. They cannot experience the real perfection of self-realization. So Queen Kunti describes Lord Krishna in these wonderful ways, that you are also shantaya, you're gentle. The Lord is very kind to everyone. Even when he's killing the demons, the demons who are killed by Krishna, they're awarded with liberation. Everyone benefits from contact with Krishna. So everything which is in relationship with Krishna, that is spiritual. If we're thinking something is not in connection with Krishna, then that is illusion, that is the maya. We have to see everything in relationship to Krishna. So this way Queen Kunti has given us this wonderful description of Lord Krishna. All right, are there any questions tonight? Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dandavat Pranam sir. Hare Krishna. Maharaj, uh, this Sahaja Mukti, you told it is nothing but spiritual suicide. Uh, but in the southern part of India, those who are from the Smartha Brahmana community, they are uh, very fond of uh, attaining moksha or liberation. Whereas the devotees of the Lord, they, they are simply not interested in that. So, how to convince these people who are very much uh, interested in liberation that both uh, 
Bhukti and Mukti are not uh, good for us, but only Bhakti is our uh, only shelter. How we can uh, convince them, Maharaj? Yes, well, we can explain to them how liberation, their endeavor for liberation, it, it's a very troublesome. They take great efforts to become liberated. But if they will take up the path of devotion, then very easily and very quickly they can come to the liberated platform. Liberation begins by understanding I am not the body. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes Brahma Bhuta Prasanatma. That one who understands he is Brahman, Brahma Bhuta, then he is joyful soul, Prasanatma. He's a joyful soul. That is the platform of liberation. And it's on that point where devotional service begins. Simply coming to that position to understand that we're not the body, it can be achieved very quickly by the devotee. We understand fully that we're not this material body. We understand by hearing Lord Krishna's words from the Bhagavad Gita and by chanting the holy name, we get direct perception that we're not the body. We can perceive ourselves as a spiritual being. Now, others, the smarter Brahmins, they're endeavoring for liberation. They will go through so many difficult procedures in order to come to the platform of liberation. And what will they get? Once they get, if, if, if they're able to come to the liberated platform, they will simply get Sayujya Mukti, the merging into the one, and that is only theoretical liberation. They will again come back to the material world. It's stated that Arora Krishrena Parampatam Tada Patanti Ado Nidrita Yasmadangra, that they think they're liberated, but because of Avishuddha Buddhaya, their intelligence is not properly purified. They come back to the material world. Why? Because no activity. You go to the platform of liberation, there's no activity, there's no relationship, there's no variety, there's only the oneness. How long can you stay there? You soon get bored because the nature of the soul is to have activity, to have relationships. We want variety. And you won't find it in the region of Sayuja Mukti. So that you, you get to that platform of impersonal liberation, you come back to the material world. And you see so many so-called liberated souls, they come back to the material world and they will take up welfare activities like they will open a school, they will open a, a, a home or a hospital or something like that. They'll do some welfare work, social work, because they don't know how to engage themselves in spiritual activities. They, they're, they're only getting away from the material activities, but they have no understanding of what is, what is real spiritual activity. And spiritual activities are hearing and chanting and remembering and worshipping, like what we're doing here, nine angas of bhakti. So the smarter brahmins, they don't know that. Their process is simply to negate all the material actions, to get to the oneness where there's nothing. Practically, there's only the brahman, you know, there's only that light and there's nothing else. So they get bored. You, the soul goes there, will become bored, and will come back to the material world again. So we explain that to these impersonalists, and many of them, they will accept that. Yes? Maharaj, uh, during my brother's daughter's uh, engagement ceremony, it was in the month of Kartik, so we had set up a small kiosk uh, of Radha, uh, Damodar Bhagavan 
and whoever was coming into the function, we would give them a lamp and ask them to offer aarti to Damodar Bhagwan. And I was telling them, whoever offers aarti to Lord Damodar Bhagwan, a ghee lamp, during the month of Kartik, they will go back home back to Godhead. So one of the, my relative, you know, he was a Smartha Brahmana, he said, uh, don't uh, get fooled into this kind of argument. Uh, liberation comes only by knowledge, not by any activity you can get liberation. Then I didn't want to argue with him. I, I just uh, kept, but eventually he did offer the uh, ghee lamp to Bhagavan, so <laughs> that would have taken care of uh, him. Yes, for the, for the, you see, the, by the path of knowledge, then it's very long, very arduous. Bhagavad Gita says, after many births and deaths, bahunam janmanamante jnanavam mam prapajant. After many births, one who is actually in knowledge will surrender to me. And such a soul is very rare. So you see, by the path of knowledge, very difficult. But by devotion, it's very easy. Krishna says, susukam kartam avyayam, very joyful. Everything very easily achieved, very joyful for the devotee. But you take the path of knowledge, a lot of trouble, very difficult, very rare. Krishna, Krishna is bhakta vatsala, he's not jnana vatsala. He wants the devotion, he's not impressed with the jnana. Hmm. Of course, the smarta brahmins are not usually very devoted to Krishna, <laughs> that's the problem. Yes. Okay, any other question? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, I have one question. This is not from today's class, but from the previous class. Can I ask uh, Maharaj? Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. You mentioned in the class regarding uh, everything has to be sanctioned by the Krishna Himself. In fact, like uh, we have to undergo this Janma Mrutyu Jara Vyadi. So over the period of time, maybe today I'm all right, but tomorrow definitely, like I will have some ailment by which I will not be able to carry out any devotion uh, to the Lord. So in that case, how a devotee, it is devotee, of course for the material person, anyway like he will be sick and he will not even have any attachment to the Lord, but as a devotee, if I get an ailment for a bitch, I will not be able to execute any devotional service, how to take up this situation? Well, you say not able to do any devotion, may not be able to use the body, but you can use your words or you can use your mind. We have the example of the brahmana who had nothing, but he was serving in his mind, he was meditating every day, worshipping the deity. And the worship, the deity can also be in the mind. It's not that the deity has to be a form of stone or wood or metal or jewels, but can be also in the mind. So you. If you you may not be you may be incapacitated, but if you keep your mind controlled, use your mind to worship Krishna. In the mind, and if you're not able to use the mind, if your condition is so bad that you're even mentally incapacitated, then if we have served Krishna throughout our life, then Krishna will remember you. It's stated in the Garuda Purana that. We, n we may not be able to remember the Lord at the time of death, but if we have served him throughout the life, he will not forget us. He is not so ungrateful that if you have actually dedicated yourself for m a long time and done service for him, then certainly he will remember you. Well, it varies, just like Putana. Putana was taken back to the spiritual world to become the maidservant, one of the nurses 
in in the Goloka Vrindavan. So Putana got special liberation and then also Pundraka also got special uh you know, he Pondrak had put two arms on and he was imitating w imitating Vishnu. So he got a Vish he got uh, uh Rupa uh, Swarupya Swarupya. He got Swarupya liberation. He got a body like Vishnu in the spiritual world. And then of course you've got giant Vijay who come uh, you know Dantavarka and Sishupal. They go back to Godhead, they go back to ja uh, their position as giant Vijay. But generally the demons killed, they would enter into the impersonal Brahma Jyoti. R like the wrestlers, Chanura, Mustika and people like that, they would go into the Brahma Jyoti. Hare Krishna Guruji, uh, I just wanted to ask one personal question. Yeah. Uh, how to get rid of mistakes which one has done in past and move ahead in life and stop overthinking? How Krishna can guide me in this? Yes, well, that's what devotional service is all about. Everyone, we do devotional service in that way that they help us to get over the mistakes and things which we've done in the past. It's the right atonement, the, it's the best atonement for all of our past activities. You take up devotional service, beginning with chanting of the Maha Mantra and hearing the topics of Lord Krishna as we're discussing here this evening. And take also the food which is being offered, the prasadam. So this is the right way to atone for everything we've done in the past. You understand? So just keep coming. <laughs> okay. Hare Krishna, Srila Prabhupada, Ki Jai. His Holiness Bhakti Bhikdu Binasang Nursing Swami Maharaj Ki. Srila Prabhupada Ki. So we will thank Maharaj for a wonderful uh, session today. Hare, by chanting one time.